Hi, everybody. Um, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to uh, talk about today's uh, League of Legends Worlds Tournament Play-In Stage Slate. Um, today is September 30th. The, today's the day two, the second day of the League of Legends Worlds Tournament. So psyched about it. Um, last night, uh, you know, most of our predictions were on point. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get the right stacks and everything. Um, so it didn't work out. Uh, you know, we didn't have any takedown, but nonetheless, it was a good slate for us. Um, so hey, yeah, let's do, just do a recap. I think that's very important because we're dealing with the same teams that are playing back to back days, and I think their form and the players' um, form is you know are more prevalent or more important than ever um, to kind of talk about and. Because, you know, like tomorrow or today, you know, just based on yesterday's form, you know, I, that that will dictate that's going to be a key factor in doing my analysis as to who who I think will win in today's matchups and, and so on. So and, and I'll, I'll make it pretty quick. I took some notes like during what, you know, when I was watching the games um, on my phone. So I'm going to look down, but that's I'm just looking at my phone, my notes here. So the first game on the slate, uh, or yesterday, uh, it was between Mad Lions and Isaris. Isaris actually played decent. Um, I actually thought they looked better than expected. I thought it was going to be a rollover for Mad Lions, but there was a combination of Isaris playing pretty well, like better than expected, like I said, and Mad Lions making some bad, silly mistakes. And I think that's due to the fact that, I mean, it was the first game for both teams. It was the first game for Mad Lions. They haven't had not played a game in a while, and, you know, they were probably under <clears throat> under um, estimating Ezra's, uh, you know, game skills. Um, so I think that's why Mad Lions struggled a bit early game, and they just made some bad choices around objectives, including Baron, where they just got wiped out by Ezra's. And Ezra's jungler, um, on the other hand, Grell, I believe his name was, he looked really good. He played Graves, and he was really the one carrying that get that team early game on. But like I said, it was just like a combination of Ezra's playing better than expected and Mad Lions making some bad mistakes. But still, nonetheless, El Yoya, Mad Lions jungler, was, I mean, he's so good. He's one of the top junglers in this tournament. Um, I do think, um, like I said, Mad Lions didn't look that great um, compared to other elite teams that played yesterday. So I think I'm going to – I'm getting a little concerned about Matt Lyons, uh, you know, prospects um, in this tournament. I don't think they can go that far unless they shore up some mistakes and their, their weaknesses throughout the playing stage. Um, so I do think against some weak teams like Ezra's and, as you see here, Wildcats, they played uh, later on yesterday that they beat them. But I think against elite teams, they – I think they're going to struggle. I think they just make some poor choices around the map. Um, and I don't like the fact that they played Seraphine at 80 carry. Unforgiven played that. Um, he played really well in the second game against Wildcats, but that, that was more on the traditional 80 carry position uh, champion. Um, so we'll see where that leads them. But I just think that that's not really in sync with the current meta. Um, I do think they needed more damage early on in the team fights, like around Baron, like I said. Um, but you know, I think they were just going for the sustain um, play style, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. But like I said, I'm a little concerned about Mad Lions prospects against elite other elite teams um, in the tournament. The next matchup of the day was Fnatic versus Evil Geniuses. Um, and I forgot to mention this, but I actually, this is something I thought about before the game um, or before the slate locked. Um, Fnatic versus EG. Uh, Europe versus um, North America, they, I mean, it's it's a rivalry, right? Like, so that, that they tend to favor in those rival games, they tend to favor like slower games, right? Because, you know, both teams are, you know, kind of uh, play, you know, trying to play smarter, so to speak, and not make as many game costing mistakes. Um, so that's kind of why I thought this ended up in a low kill game. And I think this will happen again in the next matchup between Fnatic and EG. Um, but 
uh, if, if if that happens, you know, like I think EG just has looked just looked so bad um, in this game. I think you know without Danny at eighty carry, I mean Kaori, um, and Vulcan looked not that great. I think upset um, and Rux, I believe, at support looked much better in the laning phase. Um, and especially, and then that's not the only thing, right? Like I mentioned this before in the other video, but Jojo Pion, the mid laner for EG is not, I, I, I'm just not a believer in Jojo Pion. I think he, he is a decent player, but he just, um, his, the level of inconsistencies for his, uh, gameplay, um, fluctuates so much that I just cannot trust him. And obviously he has a decent ceiling, um, but I just do not see that play out well for EG's uh, chances throughout the tournament. And then one last one last bad thing about, I mean, they had so many bad mistakes, in my opinion, just from the gameplay standpoint. Their jungler inspired is good. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's really good. But I just feel like he just had a wrong focus on kind of focusing on the top side of the map with impact, um, trying to get him going instead of shoring up the bottom lane where I think should have been his focus rather um, against Fnatic in my opinion. So I just feel like EG needs to have a different type of game game strategy going into the next match today. Um, but I just don't like his, I just don't like their prospects, you know, throughout the tournament and Fnatic really has looked good. Um Fnatic's bottom lane looked good, like I said. Um, yeah, I just had a wrong. I just had the. I just had the. Um, I just had a lot of issues with EG's bans and picks as well, with um, Caitlyn and Lux playing in the bottom lane, and I think that without the early lead, that's such a bad champion champion combo for EG to kind of you know flip flip the game flip the table so to speak in the game. Um, I, I really like Fnatic, um, showing, I really like them a lot. Um, and I liked them a lot in yesterday's video and I like them even more. And one thing I would like to point out today, Fnatic is going to have, be at full strength, back at full strength with Hillisang back at support. So it's going to be upset and Hillisang in the bottom lane. Um, so I think I like Fnatic's chances to finish first still in that group. The next matchup was between Loud and Beyond Gaming. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, we you saw my other video um, yesterday, and but Beyond Gaming, I expected them to win. Um, Robo, the top laner for Loud, um, I thought he would have a good showing. He, oh, he was the only player on that team that I thought would be pretty good on Team Loud, but he just did not have a good game. And then Kino uh, was really good in the mid lane for Beyond Gaming, um, and yeah, just Beyond Gaming was a better, just better team. So just, I mean, I don't know what more I can say. They just had a better gameplay, game by game strategy, better bans and picks, and their Kaisa was fed in the bottom lane. Really, after that, I mean, they just kind of steadily won the game and finished the game very strong. I like them a lot. Um, but loud is not the best best uh measure, uh you know measurement to kind of see how good Beyond Gaming is. So we'll see where that leads them today. I think today's game Beyond Gaming, uh for Beyond Gaming is going to be a very important, uh for that reason. Mad Lions versus Istanbul Wildcats IW. Like I said, um, Istanbul Wildcats is not that great. Um, you know from Turkey there's. There's not a good team compared to other um, good teams in the, in the tournament. Um, bands and picks favored Mad Lions. Uh, Mad Lions had a better top half of the map. And the bottom lane, um, actually, Istanbul Wildcats should have um, smashed just based on the laning phase uh, advantages they had, but, but, you know, based on bands and picks. But um, IW actually focused on getting the mid priority instead of the bottom priority. Um, and Kaisa got fed again for Mad Lions. Yeah, so 
like I said, I don't have that much that much more to say. Um, I just think Mad Lions had an easy game here, um, but I'm still a little concerned about Mad Lions prospects. And Istanbul Wildcats, to me, may not win another game in this tournament, just based on that output. <laughs> um, the next matchup is was um, Chiefs versus Fnatic. All right, this is the game that I want to talk about a little bit um, because this is a game that I thought I kind of envisioned a potential upset between Chiefs and Fnatic. Um I thought Chiefs has looked great in in their respective region coming out of coming into the tournament and they looked really good in the early game. I mean they were ahead in gold. Um they had more turrets destroyed and they were in the lead for the first like 5 to 10 minutes and then Fnatic kind of took over from the macro standpoint. They just had a better um gameplay. But I just feel like at the at the end of the day, the bans and picks before the game kind of decided the game for me, at least. Um, the Chiefs coach or manager just didn't have a very good picks and bans, in my opinion. And I mean, they picked Graves, Braum, and Tristana. Um, it's a very hard combination to kind of execute and carry. Um, it's a very short-ranged um, combination where you have to engage and then they didn't really have a good engage to follow up with those champions that I just mentioned. Um, so that like kind of naturally translates to them kind of gaining, securing objectives and kind of go from there, like, you know, scale into the late game and mid or mid game. And then kind of, you know, kind of that's their best win condition to kind of win it that way. But in the laning phase, they just didn't look that great. Um, I think they looked good before level six but as soon as they all turn level six i mean they're like a 10 minute mark 15 minute mark fanatic just had a huge huge advantage and kind of snowball from there but humanoid looked really good and upset obviously had a penta kill in this game um first penta and the only penta in the tournament so far um i just feel like the chiefs kind of underestimated the power of fanatics carries um, so I think they'll have a better game plan. I think picks and bans is like probably one of the few things that you can fix like between two days, like overnight. Um, so I think I'm 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 having more trust in their coaching staff than I guess some other people may. But I think the Chiefs have a pretty good chance. I think I still like them as a dark horse, you know, today and based on other matchups that I've seen for other teams, I like the Chiefs um, to still win. Um, you know, one of these matches in an upset fashion, I think. All right. The next matchup is what I had very many issues with, right? Like I lost probably the most amount of money um on DFM here versus Loud. I thought DFM would fare much better <laughs> having dominated after having dominated um in their league in LJL in Japan. Um, I know Team Loud obviously having played one game under the, their belt. I think they were better um, prepared um, or just more loose um, to play the next game and the second game. I think that favored them a lot. Um, and DFM looked very tight and their bands and picks were not that great. Um, so I like I like the fact that Team Loud won here, except DFM's um, laning phase was not good. Um, let's see. In team fights, it, they were even worse. I mean, Team Loud, you know, they're known for the team fights and everything in CB Low in their re in their region. Um, but I mean, they, I mean, DFM just lost that whole match. Um, at the first uh, Rift Herald, where Zoe was really good. Um, for the champion that uh, Team Loud played in the mid lane, top lane was not great for DFM, uh, for Evie. There was a rumor that Evie was um, suffering from sickness um, going into the game, but you know I don't know how much that played into him sucking, really. Um, DFM tried to play it slow and scale to the late game to kind of flip the table, but just didn't look that great. And I just think DFM has not really fully adapted to the current meta they just did not look that great like 
shifting from one side to another based on game objectives and like the 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 champions that they they played um i don't know i just didn't think they looked great um and against good team fighting teams like team loud i think they will struggle um but i think you know traditionally the players on that team on dfm you know tend to favor more of a scale scaling type of play and gameplay so against like early game heavy teams like team loud i think they they you know have a tendency to struggle and that showed in this match and then saigon buffalo versus uh istanbul wildcats like i said istanbul wildcats is not good um unfortunately saigon buffalo just smashed um over wildcats but Versus a weak opponent, um, Buffalo just took care of business. Um, yeah, it was closer than I thought, actually. Um, I think Buffalo looked good, but not great. Um, I think Saigon Buffalo has looked better, even in the MSI midseason tournament. So this really, this game doesn't really tell me much because it was against a weak opponent like I I W, um. So we'll see what happens, but um, I you know I don't think it's a game that I need, I needed to kind of you know kind of make a position on like who you know how good Saigon Buffalo is. So I'll just have to kind of wait and see today, um, as to how how good they look you know versus a better opponent. All right, last one is between DRX and RNG. Obviously, this was the marquee matchup of the day. RNG looked good. DRX looked good and even better. Um, DRX's laning phase was kind of, you know, suspect. Um, I think RNG's laning phase was actually better than DRX, especially in the top lane, uh, where Kingen is not the best top laner, as we all saw yesterday. Um, struggled against Breathe um, for RNG. Um, I think Piosik playing, having played Maokai in this matchup, or in the first game of the tournament, was very bold, and everyone was wondering um, how well that was going to play out, and it really didn't. I think Maokai was okay. I think he, um, I don't think it was Maokai. I think it was more Piosik um, helping this team win because in the early game. I think Piosik on Maokai had two chances to flip the table and kind of gain get uh give them an early lead. It could have been two and zero, um, getting the first blood and the second team fight in the mid lane and the top lane where they could have gotten kills. Really, with any other jungling champion, I think he would have gotten it. Um, it's just like Maokai doesn't do a lot of damage. I think in team fights and um in team fights against teams uh with Vi as a jungler, which Wei played. I think it's a good counter pick um, to kind of reverse uh, re-engage um, against the opponent. Um, I do think it helped him secure objectives, certain objectives, especially in the bottom bottom lane, uh, especially the last dragon, the soul dragon soul that they had to secure. Um, but, you know, I think POC looked decent. That was the question mark for me for DRX's chances. Um, just given the current meta that favors a lot of jungling carries, um, I like PO6 chances throughout the tournament. Um, I just hope that he plays somebody else, some other champion other than Maokai. Um, but DRX look good, um, especially like I said in team fights. And last thing about I'll say about DRX because they won is Zika is probably the most underrated player in the tournament. Zika in the mid lane looked amazing. He was the reason why they won. Probably two out of three, two out of three team fights that they had against RNG. Um, Zika was the reason why they secured the Soul Dragon and the Third Dragon and the the team fights around the mid lane. Um, I really like Zika. I liked them before in the LCK, but I like him a lot here too. I think he may be the best mid laner uh, in the in the playing stage. Um, compared to like Niski for, for Mad Lions or Humanoid, um, and, and you know in the um, for fanatic but nonetheless i just think drx having won this game um i think drx may finish first um in their group um so we'll see Death and barrel in the bottom lane looked okay and then for rng i'll say a few things um shahu looked really good 
Um, he made some mistakes early on, but you know he still was really good in the you know team fighting and macro game standpoint. He was still influencing the bottom lane. That's why Deft and Barrel really couldn't do much. Um, Piosek really focused on the top side and the mid side most of the time, but um, and the reason was that Xiaohu was constantly putting map pressure with Vigen and just kind of roaming around, um, kind of putting pressure on to the bottom lane. But some, you know, one of those times actually backfired against RNG and DRX won that big team fight. Um, so, but I like that, you know, proactiveness in teams um, instead of just sitting back um, and not do anything like Detonation Focus Me um, has shown in, in their games. So I like RNG's chances as well. Still get out of the group, but this was the marquee matchup that, you know, it was such a good game. So both teams were really good. All right, that's it for the recap. Sorry, it took a little longer than I expected, um, but I, I'll go through each game here today and kind of go through, uh, you know, what I what I think will happen most likely and then the match predictions and then maybe some spots for potential upsets which will naturally translate into playing some gpp lineups for dfs um daily fantasy sports if you are into that um after all you know most of you guys play the daily fantasy sports so all right so i have my notes just based on those observations from yesterday um for fanatic versus dfm fanatic should win i think fanatic should smash um dfm has looked really bad um, like I said, they, you know, look to kind of scale to the mid to late game. So I do think this is going to be lower in kills um, compared to Fnatic's, you know, just average gameplay. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, Fnatic is back at full strength with Heli saying back at support. I like Fnatic to smash here today. I'm not going to have any DFM exposure, unfortunately. And then EG versus Loud. Um yeah, like EG struggled a lot against Fnatic yesterday. Um, Jojo Pion was suspect. Uh, you know, Jojo Pion was mediocre at best. Bottom lane was mediocre at best. The jungler inspired focus on the wrong lanes and bans and picks were not that great. Um, Team Loud, on the other hand, you know, got a win. Um, they looked really good in team fights, which I expect them to be because that's all they do in their respective region. Uh, but I think this is a good spot for Team Loud to kind of pull off an upset. Um, they show me that their mid lane is really, really good. Um, and their bans and picks were really, really decent. Let's see. I think Team Loud can pull this off. Um, I'm going to go, this is hard. I think it's 50-50, right? Like, unlike the odds indicate, let me see what the odds are between EG and Team Loud real quick. I'm sure EG is favored. Yeah, man, that's heavy. Minus 475. I hadn't seen the odds before I, you know, even looked at the slate today. I think Fnatic will win, like I said. Plus, plus 320 is heavy, right? Like, but I shouldn't be scared to, pull, you know, pick an upset, right? Like, I still think EG's players are better individually than than the compared to the players on Team Loud. But I just feel like from the gameplay and the strategy standpoint, EG just did not have any color, any identity yesterday against Fnatic. Um, I think EG's going to flip the switch and... I mean, they'll probably play well. But so I'll pick EG. This is probably a cop out answer. I'll pick EG, but I do see a potential upset opportunity for Team Loud. And not only that, Team Loud, like I said, they favor a lot of team fights. And that translates into a lot more fantasy points for both teams in this game. So that naturally also is another factor why Team Loud is a good GPP pick, as well as EG's kill upside may go up. So I'm definitely going to have exposure to both teams in this matchup, um, just from the, the overall point ceiling standpoint. But also, I think EG will win at the end of the day, but I think it's going to be a kill-heavy matchup. 
All right. Saigon Buffalo versus Ezra's. Like I said, Saigon Buffalo looked decent, but then I was against a weak opponent. So I wasn't 100% sure how that would pan out. Um, I think it's more of a 50 50. Um, Ezra's actually looked decent with their jungler, Grail, playing really well. Um, Buffalo, like I said, did not look that good, as great as they were in the MSI. I think their form is okay. Um, and VCS, the the league they're in, they like to favor team fights. Um, the laning phase for Israel was weak, but their team fights was pretty good. Um. I think it's more of a 50-50. I think Saigon Buffalo should be minus four, one, 400. Oh, 300. Man, I, I have, so I have two upset spots here between EG and Loud and then Saigon Buffalo and Ezreus. I think Ezreus definitely has a shot. I think it's more of a 50-50 or a 60-40, 60 being the Saigon Buffalo. So 40 is pretty good, I think. Um, good chance to pull off an upset. I think Team Loud and Israel both have pretty good shots at um, winning today. So I know yesterday was pretty chalky except for DFM, um, but I think today there will be more upsets. I think these uh, minor league teams, minor region teams, were a little nervous coming into the tournament. I think they'll play with more confidence after you know having a game under their belt. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like those spots for upsets, but you know, at the end of the day, the players themselves are better, but are they a better team? I'm not quite sure. DFM versus Chiefs. Um, this is probably a good spot to take Chiefs here. Um, but I think DFM, if they make some uh, corrections on their bands and picks, but also in the laning phase, um, the mid lane, especially focusing on the mid lane with Yaharong, uh, versus the Chiefs, I think DFM has a pretty good shot. I think um, top and jungle, the Chiefs have an advantage. Arthur is really good. In the bottom lane, I think it's a wash. I think DFM, like I said, they are not the type of team that can flip the table if they lose an early game advantage. And I think the Chiefs are good at that with Arthur kind of you know controlling the jungle in the early phase of the game. DFM's jungler steel just did not, did not look that great yesterday. Um, so the only thing that I like, I'm hesitant to take pick the Chiefs as the upset pick is because the Chiefs coaching staff kind of <laughs> threw a wrench there yesterday with their pans, uh, picks and bans, and their champion selection was not that great. I think they can fix it. I th I'm sure he reads a lot of the comments and the feedback from. Everybody, including other experts, and they all kind of talked about how poorly uh, structured and executed um, the bands and picks were for the Chiefs. So I think the Chiefs will do a better job before the game. But in the game, I like the Chiefs a lot. Um, I like that um, player roster for the Chiefs and the form that they were in coming into the playoffs. It's so unfortunate that they had to go up against probably the best team in the playing stage. And Fnatic. Um, so I'll pick the Chiefs to upset. I don't know what the odds are. It's very close, as you see. Um, I'm going to pick the Chiefs to win here over DFM. The next matchup, uh, Evil Geniuses. They're playing their second game of the day against Beyond Gaming. Beyond Gaming, like I said, they played against um, Team Loud. Um, Team Loud, you know, good early game team. I think Beyond Gaming did a good job neutralizing that advantage for their opponent i think evil geniuses is now is not knowing for doing that they are more known for their mid to late game i don't i don't think they will just dominate and smash in the early game phase i think beyond gaming will do just fine i'm gonna have to favor <clears throat> beyond gaming here um actually they are the underdog so i'm picking i looks like i have a lot of picks for upsets today and so I don't know. We'll have to see. Like, I don't know um, if evil geniuses can flip the script there to be able to do that. I don't know. Um, I think they're definitely going to have a better 
uh, output in the in the mid phase and then the bottom lane where they struggled a lot in the first game. Um, the top and jung the top laner and the jungler for Beyond Gaming were really good, and I think that's where the uh, um, Evil Genius's strengths are as well. Impact and Inspired, I think, are the two best players on that team. Um, and Beyond Gaming has the counterparts in those lanes um, and positions. Um, so I think Beyond Gaming is going to win. Um, I think EG does do better when they lose the first game in these types of tournaments. Their feedback is really good. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go beyond gaming. So that's my, another upset pick of the day. <laughs> Looks like I have a lot of upsets, but really like it was very chalky yesterday. I think there are going to be a lot of upsets today. And then everyone's going to be like, oh, you know, like we don't, we don't like, nobody's going to know. Nobody knows who's going to win. Um, but like I said, at the end of the day, Fnatic, DRX, and RNG are probably the three strongest teams that I've seen so far, and that does not include Mad Lions. Like I said, I have their, I have the, you know, their own concerns. Um, so next matchup of the day is DRX versus Saigon Buffalo. Um, I think DRX will definitely win this one. Um. DRX's form is really good, especially Zika in the bottom, uh, in the mid lane. Um, Saigon Buffalo, their mid laner is probably the weakest guy on that game. Just after watching that game yesterday, I think Zika will smash. So Zika is probably the player of choice if I have to pick a player to do well in daily fantasy sports or any prop bets. If you're interested in that, I like Zika's over. Um, Bean J in the bottom lane. Bean J is the jungler for Saigon in the bottom lane. It's pretty good, but with depth and barrel experienced, I think they'll be okay. Um, I'm a little worried about oh, uh, at the jungling position. Okay, so one thing I would like to point out that's important is DRX is starting Juhan over Piosik. So Piosik started yesterday. Um, DRX has two games today, so I don't know if Juhan's going to start the first game and then PO6 is going to rotate again um, in the second game. I don't know who's going to start in the second game, but in the first game, at least, I know I saw an article that uh, Juhan is going to be starting um, at jungle. So now w will that affect DRX's chances? Yeah, I think it will. I think Juhan looked pretty good in the playoffs that he subbed in over PO6 when PO6 was struggling a bit. Um, a few months ago, um, I think Juhan is just as good, um, but not as aggressive as Piosik. I think Piosik's ceiling is much higher than Juhan, but Juhan brings more consistency um, and kind of um, the calming effect for the rest of his teammates. And I think that it's probably more important right now um, after winning that big game against RNG, against an inferior team like Saigon Buffalo. I think Juhan is probably what they needed um, and what the doctor ordered. Um, I think Zika having that presence, you know, more calming presence in jungle um, and kind of supporting Zika. I, I think Zika is set up to do really well here today. I, I have DRX winning here today. Um, and then Mad Lions versus RNG. Um, RNG should win. I think they're mad that they lost to DRX. But Mad Lions is no joke. Like I said, their ceiling is really high. But like I said, I saw them make some bad mistakes um, early in the game yesterday um, against some bad opponents. Um, RNG should win, but um, yeah, I think RNG should win. Um, but RNG also made some bad mistakes um, in their game against DRX as well without vision and without checking uh, as a, t you know, checking like you know, bushes and um, unseen areas as a team. So both teams, Mad Lions and RNG, are good, right? Like they're the elite teams in the playing stage. But 
both teams I've, I've, I saw yesterday make a, make some stupid mistakes. Um, so, you know, we'll see what happens there. But I will ha- I have RNG winning this matchup. DRX versus Wildcats. Come on now. We know what's going to happen here. Um, DRX should win. I think um, at this point, IW is going to just clean this, you know, uh, clear the sink and kitchen sink everything, throw everything into the sink. Um, so this might turn out to be like a kill fest. <laughs> um, if you are playing the late slate on DFS, this is probably the game that you want to focus on. Um, so anyway, I think DRX should win here. Um, who knows who's going to start at jungle for DRX, but DRX should win here just based on the form. So anyway, I know this was a longer video than I thought it was going to be, but hopefully, you know, as we go from day to day, it will get shorter and we'll have better, more succinct, um, summary of their strengths and weaknesses and and their tendencies, um, and how that, you know, kind of influences our match predictions. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you will, please, please hit the like button or subscribe to their channel. Um, this video was sponsored by True DFS. So, you know, go True DFS um, and to check out some content about League of Legends uh, content, but also other um, sports. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button. That would mean a lot and kind of motivate me to keep making these videos. But good luck out there. Yeah. And have fun. Bye bye.